In this video, we're going to focus on how to create a plugin in Chart.js. Many of you probably want to learn how to create a plugin in Chart.js. And here we're going to start with really the foundation. This here is really the basics and you will even learn how to use Canvas because if you want to know how to make a plugin, you must understand how to use a Canvas. All right, so let's start with the basics. First of all, we're going to create a uh, basic chart. And after we're going to create a plugin within that chart. So in here, we go in here, we're just going to add up the chart. So I'm going to click here on from here. This is the default. This is in chart GS 3.4.1. Then in here, we have this here. You're creating a chart. You can see all of this data here. Grab this, paste this in here. All right, just put it in there. Next one is get, click on getting started. Get the URL here. And after we'll grab this as well. We we'll grab this. So copy it. All right. Put it in here. I'll just overrule that one. All right. And then here we're going to put in the adjusted version here, this here. Copy that and paste. All right. So now we're done here. I'm going to give it a proper indentation. Plus, I will give this a class here. So this will have a fixed class for the width to avoid the chart just doesn't scale into infinity. All right. In here we say chart box. So this is our box basically of the chart. And in the style here, style, we will say width 700. So we say dot, press the class, chart box here, and then say width 700 pixels. That should be more than sufficient. Save this here, refresh. There we are. All right, so we've got our chart here. Next thing what I want to do is I want to convert this first into the standard blocks that Chart.js documentation is using consistently. So we're going to put in here, slash, slash, and then in here I'll say here, this is the setup block. We have another one is the configuration block. We have another one, which is the, uh, let me think, that's the render and initialization block. And since we're going to add a plugin, this plugin should be here just below the setup block. We'll say here, plugin block. All right, there we are. We got this. So the next thing we want to do is we want to move them all in the right order so we have everything set up. So for the setup block, Copy everything here or everything between data and this here, between this curly bra uh, curly brackets or curly braces. Cut this part. And here we say constant, and this constant is equal to data, and then we say constant equal. Here, paste this, there we are. All right. Then what I want to do here, make sure you have a parenthesis, oh no, sorry, another parenthesis, but a uh, semicolon. Very important, you have to close them with semicolon. Same story here. We're going to use a constant oh, for the plugin. Oh, I'll, just, I'll just leave this here right now because I want to do it vertical. Tick. Constant, there's a config for configuration here, uh, curly braces, semicolon, and in between here, we're going to grab the building blocks of chart.js, which is type, data, options. These three are the foundation of chart.js. All right, got that here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all of this here, just put it here. This and the reason why is because in ES6 you can do instead of data data, since this is the same name, you can just cut this away, save you some time. All right, very important here. Final one is the render block. We have it almost done here in the render block constant. And I'm going to grab here this because this is our ID name that we have here, and I want to stay consistent with the ID name. There's an equal here, and I'm going to create here a constructor new chart with capital C. And then here we have, instead of the curly braces, we have here parentheses. Pay attention here, parentheses. And in here, all we're going to put in here is document, oh, document.getElement by ID. And the ID name is my chart. And my chart we have here. Oh, sorry, we don't need to do that one. Only that and comma. The reason why is it really gets it. It's really understood that this is including get context. So no need to do this. Enter, and then we have config here. Why config? Because this is our uh, constant here, and this constant is dependent on this here above. And same, of course, this one here would be dependent on this, this is dependent on the other. So as you can see, it's like a domino effect. So they're all dependent on each other. All right, we've got all of this. Save this, refresh here, a bar chart, nothing has changed. As you can see, it's consistently same. All right. What I want to do now is I want to start to work with the plugin because this is the core. In the plugin here, what you need to do here is the following. I'm going to give you a constant, and this constant will be 
you can give it any name let's assume this will be the plugin name and I have no name for the plugin so I will say here this will be a uh, I guess draw test I just saying something so you can give it anything I would say for example if you would have a specific plugin doing something for the background background color or background canvas plugin etc etc whatever you want give it something logical all right so we have this here so in here we're going to use an ID and this ID is key because the ID here is basically the, the description of that as well meaning this one here so I'm going to grab this one just be consistent with it whatever the constant is here use it here as an ID as well so we have this here but once we have this then we can continue on and work here with the following what we're going to do here is basically say the following before draw why do we need this this is extremely important before draw indicates that it will start grabbing certain values before it would before the chart has been drawn the reason why is if you would do it after draw for example then you cannot add your items anymore because it's already done the chart has already been rendered basically so we say wait a minute before we do anything else hold on we have this command here we have still certain items and what do i want to extract even for that these are the following chart which is basically the chart item here yes all the arguments matching in the chart we, these are all commands by the way so i'm not making them up they are already built in in, in the chart.js library so i'm not making them up and finally the options these three are your core that's the ones you should use most of the time all right once we have this so we have this function here it says wait a minute before you do anything grab all these data don't even draw anything we want all this data before you even start drawing so it's basically loading behind this behind the screen all the data and then we can start to do here something i'm going to show you something uh, this is extremely important but it's not important yet because we're not going to use it yet but i'm going to put it here if, uh, if i will comment it out but i'll say here the following this is a constant or basically we can not comment it out as well but say constant and this constant will be equal or oh, sorry not equal but this is the constant and we have here curly braces because we have a constant and this constant have multiple values between each other which is an array so we say the following here ctx comma chart area and this one here this is basically an array or an object with a few items in here that are important sorry this is not an array this is an object by the way and in this object we have a few items which will be the top bottom left right comma with height all right so we have this then we say comma we're not done yet and then we say here the following is the scales and here in the scales we're going to get the next item the so scales make sure you have this uh, column here and then we say here y of x comma y all right once we got that then we say this equals chart that's it so these variables all are equal to the chart which eventually in here grabs it all make it packs them around and later on we'll grab all of these and start working with this now if you want what is this i'll just comment out it's not important now don't don't spend your time on. all right what are we going to do well we have this now if we save this you can see here nothing happens so let's start to draw something and this is pure canvas tag or canvas um, attributes so we're going to draw something here that's directly in the canvas so let's start to make something first of all uh, before we do that we can say here ctx dot dot and the ctx is essential because it's part of this here and later on if you want to what is ctx ctx is basically the canvas itself so this is ctx because ctx means draw something in the canvas so if I refresh here and open up the developer tab you can see here uh, console log did it do anything oh of course before we even do something we need to activate this we did not activate this so how do we activate this very very important here in the options you see the options here comma we type in here plugins brackets and then here we grab the name the name is draw test but that's why be consistent with it draw test and constant draw test everything in there same save this if I now save it and refresh 
Oh, all right, TDX has not been defined. All right, so I guess that this needs to be already activated. Sorry about that, so we have to do that. There we are. So now we have that activated, and apparently that really was essential. Although CTX is an essential part later on, I'll tell you, for drawing the chart. So we have here now everything, and basically CTX means Canvas Rendering Context 2D. Yes? So if you remember, when I was here and I said, here's something with dot, get, uh, context 2D, and I thought it was like this, this here basically means draw something in the canvas. Here, chart just understands it already, and so that's why we can refer here as well CTX. Very important to remember. CTX already has a shortcut, but that's why apparently we need to have this one. So sorry, my, my mistake on that one, that this is a part that is essential to show immediately. All right, now we've got everything here. So what I want to do now is just a basic item before we even, even continue on. So what I'm going to do here is, and you can just follow along, in the next video I'll go even deeper in what this is. I'm going to say your fill style equal, this is string, blue, meaning you're going to give it a blue color. And then next thing is ctx dot fill rec for rectangular. And then here we're going to put in four values. Or we'll just put in 10, 10, 10, and 10. And now later on in the next video, I will explain what this is. All right, so if I save this now and I refresh, you can see now we have this square block here. All right, beautiful. So next video, we're going to dive deep into that square block and figure out what we really do. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.